Good day, and welcome to a discussion on resumes. My name is Robert Boyd. I'm a lecturer and director of School of Business Interns here at SUNY Geneseo. First question that I was asked is, well, why are you doing this presentation? Well, the first thing is the School of Business wants you to be successful in finding both an internship and your first job out of college. Resumes are an evolving field and there's no definitive right or wrong way to write them. I'm sharing the best practices of what has worked in the past three years. So what I'm going to share with you today has gotten people internships at great firms, has helped them get great jobs. So this is first-hand experience as to what I'm seeing. I also bring almost 40 years of hiring to the discussion and I've looked at thousands and thousands of resumes and hired hundreds of people over the years. So what we're seeing is, I think, that which is effective. Many employers have commented as to how varied resumes are from Geneseo. They range from, these are great, fantastic kids, to, oh my God, this is really bad. We're talking bad. We'd like them to say, all are great. So let's start with the very basic question. What do you hope to achieve with your resume? What are you trying to achieve? What is it that you want to happen when you give someone your resume? Think about it for a second. We're business school. So we're trying to sell something and what we're trying to sell and what you're trying to sell is yourself. So what do you hope? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. You want the recipient to call you up on the phone or email to want to talk further with you. That's the first step is to make the contact interest them enough to be able to contact you. You have less than a minute or if it's electronically read, you have a millisecond to make your point. So why would a firm want to have further discussion with you? Well, a few things. First, you have the skills they are looking for. You have had success in what you've done in the past and you have something unique to offer. So think about that. You want somebody to contact you and they have a whole stack of resumes, a whole part of people interested all of them who have a degree, say a degree in accounting, a degree in finance, that they all have that minimum requirement. So what makes you different? Employers are looking for skills. So that's what you want to create. Now, how do you construct a resume that does that? The number one reason the firm may call you back is you have the skills you're looking for. Today there's over four million jobs not being filled in our country because of lack of skills. Okay, That's huge. So if you have these skills and you can highlight them, that's important. So the first step is to find out what the skills the employer is looking for. Not necessarily starting with your skills, but what are employers looking for. If you know what specific skills your employer is looking for, you can write your resume to demonstrate those skills. Another question that I'm asked all the time, well, isn't every firm the same, looking for the same set of skills? And I'd suggest to you the answer is no. If you focus on skills at the very high level, they're clearly going to be similar. But if you go deeper in what the company is looking for and how they operate the business, you will find that they are very different. Your resume should be focused to demonstrate the skills that distinguish you from others and look like what the company wants. Okay? Remember, you want them to contact you further. If a computer looks at your resume, a software package, it's going to focus in on key words. Okay, and I'm going to suggest to you that your resume has a basic structure that's the same for everything. What you're going to put there. However, I suggest that you have to tailor your resume 
uniquely to every person, every place you apply. So it's a customization of one. And that's done by using adjectives. So if a firm uses adjectives, you need to use the same adjectives. Remember, you're trying to apply and show how unique you are to that firm. So you can't use generic ones. We have technology. You can add words here and there, change them. The structure remains the same. Another question. I already have a resume. It's probably good enough. I did it in this class, this class. I did it in high school. Well, how do you know if it's sufficient? Let's check through the basics. First, is it one font throughout? Proportional fonts. Don't multiple fonts. Okay? Um, one address. You don't need permanent in school. Nobody really cares. You should not have an objective. Think about this for a second. You're applying for a specific internship. They know that's your objective. That doesn't distinguish you. No relevant coursework. It doesn't mean anything, guys. If you have a degree in accounting, everybody knows what you're taking. If you have a degree in business, everybody knows what you're taking. That's not material. It doesn't distinguish you. Okay. If you did a research project that was published, then you can put that in. But that's not in relevant coursework. That's in experiences. Okay, no high school stuff, okay? There's only one exception to no high school stuff, and that's unless you're an Eagle Scout, okay? No other interests. Nobody cares. If you have a specific skill that comes through from an experience that you've been engaged in, that's okay. But other interests on their own doesn't distinguish you. Next one. Don't let just simply say I have Microsoft skills. If you have advanced skills, then explain how they're advanced in your experience. If you claim to have advanced skills, talk about how you've, what you've done with them, that you've, you, you've uh, taken a, a significant amount of data, you've sorted data, you've used pivot tables, you use macros. Be specific, but do that in experience. Everybody knows how to use Office. Okay? It's the depth to it. And Excel, I would suggest to you, is one where you can distinguish yourself. Let's keep going with some of the basics as we continue. Okay? We only need three headers. One for education, experiences, and skills. And I suggest that you could probably drop skills if you're an effective writer. Remember, you are demonstrating your writing skills to this potential intern sponsor or employer. You don't need to use different kinds of experience. That is using space that can highlight you and not try to bucket you. You don't need to say work experience, relevant experience, academic experience, extracurricular experience. That doesn't distinguish you. In fact, it makes you look it makes it look more confusing. Okay? You don't need to bucket your experiences. Take your experience and sh demonstrate what you've done in the skills. Okay? Is it your resume concise or does it provide a lot of detail? There is a difference between a resume and a curriculum vitae. A curriculum vitae lists everything that you've done. A resume isn't intended to do that. Okay? Is your resume in proper English with appropriate punctuation? appropriate grammar, tenses, okay? Uh, don't tell your life story in chronological order. If it does, it's most likely way too long. What can you do to grab people's attention and say, yes, I want to look at it? The next, it needs to be in PDF format when you send it out, okay? Because fonts and things in Word, when they can be imported into different scanning, software packages don't always come through, but a PDF gives you some very straightforward how it will look when someone opens it. Okay, so if you can go through your resume and answer all those questions, keep going. Then that's good. You've made it. Now, here's the next test. Read every sentence and every word and ask yourself, does what I wrote highlight a skill that you possess? Is it something that distinguishes me from others? Is there something that 
makes me unique. If it doesn't, why is it on your resume? Is it just taking up space? You have the basics, who you are, where you went to school, but these are the three questions. So if you can't read your resume and say that every word addresses one of these three, okay, then it's too long. Don't confuse skills with activities, what you have done. There's a difference. Activities are what you've done. Skills are what you've used. And that's what employers are looking for. What kind of skills are employers looking for? Well, they're looking for well-rounded individuals, okay? But they're looking at some general things. Ability to work in a team. Ability to make decisions and solve problems. The next one, ability to plan, organize, and prioritize work, okay? Make decisions, solve problems. Plan, organize, and prioritize your work. Communicate verbally with people inside and outside the organization. Ability to obtain and process information. These are the process skills that are looked for. So you can talk about what you've done and highlight that you've used these skills and develop them. We all have skills at different levels. Some of them are well tested and others of them, yeah, we have them, but they haven't been tested under fire. What are some of the other ones? Ability to analyze quantitative data technical knowledge related to the job, and technical is not just understanding the theory, but how do you take something theoretical and make it apply? Proficiency with software, computer software programs. These can be ones that are specific, the general ones, the Microsoft Word, Excel, but it can also be specific programs in your field of study. The ability to create and or edit written reports. Your best evidence of your ability to do this is your resume. Ability to sell and influence people. Influence people being the key there. How have you influenced people? So these are the skills. So you gotta ask me, well, why are these skills? Well, we're in a new economy today and there's a new set of expectations that people have, employers have, businesses have. The nature of work has changed over time and it's changing at a rapid rate every day. In the old economy, there was control. Now we're distributed. Autonomy to collaborative. From incremental to audacious. From authority to beliefs. From shareholder to stakeholder. Reliable to transformative. How can your resume transform you? Let's keep going. What should the education section include? Let's be specific. I'd suggest that you start off with the State University of New York College at Geneseo, Bachelor of with a minor in, if it's a program. Anticipated graduation, May, June, whatever it is. Yes, put your GPA in. GPA of. You don't need to put out a four because if you put 3.5, it's known. That out of four wastes space. So that's that. If you studied abroad, put the name of the university or college, where it was, what was studied, and if the program was in language other than English, that becomes important to put that in because that would demonstrate a multilingual skill. Awards. And scholarships should be here, including honor societies. List the name of the honor society. That's why they call it an honor society. If you have participated in the gold program, remember, we know what gold is, but outside employers don't. You could say participated in blank non-credit workshops on leadership, communication, and teamwork, and others if needed, through the Genesee Opportunities for Leadership Development Program. Now just think about that. That's telling them that you went out of your way, okay? You didn't have to do this, okay? So this gives you a picture of your education. Any certifications or licenses become part of that. Many of you have earned your insurance license. I would put every kind of certification or license you have down. 
So that's your education section. Don't put anything else there. This is really establishing your basic credentials. Okay? This is your credentials. So what should I put in the relevant experience? Work experience, college activities. I already said this. You only need one section entitled experience. Nobody distinguishes between them. Sorry, as much as you think they do, they don't. They're just useless words. But we've always been taught that. Well, that how do you distinguish you or identify the skills? Do you want to look like everybody else or do you want to be different? You have limited space. Don't fill it up with useless stuff. I could take most of the, a lot of the resumes I see, yeah, you got to come back. What should I include in experiences? The key things that you have done that highlight your skills. You don't need to list everything you've ever done. Don't just describe what you did, but quantify it or use a specific example. You want to indicate the company, the location, the date, and the job title. Combine were appropriate in one sentence. So if you started out as a camp counselor and every year you took on progressively more responsibility, you can don't need to list all four positions. You can list the camp name and say that over four years you progressed from a junior counselor into assistant camp leader. Okay? Because that's demonstrated you've progressively learned and achieved. Okay? Read and reread what you wrote. Does it state the obvious or does it give the something, the reader something meaningful? Everything you've done is relevant as different experiences build different skills. Don't use I. I does not have a place in a resume. If you just sat at home and played video games all summer for the, your career, eh, we got a problem. Okay. I guess I'm getting it. Let's start with some typical summer jobs. Summer camp counselor. You could say, worked at a summer camp. Big deal. Who cares? Better would be planned, organized, and implemented activities for 28-year-old boys in a residential summer camp. Look at how that's different and highlights the skill. It's quantified. Next line could be resolve, resolve conflicts between campers and made a strong connection with parents. Now just think about those two sentences. What does that describe you as? Can it make you different? If you worked for a number of years and supervised junior counselors, you could say, I supervised five junior counselors. Making it better could be trained and coached five junior supervisors. Same thing, just more to think about. Okay. Give me some more. I worked as a server in a restaurant. Built customer service skills that resulted in above average tips. Think about that. What does that tell you? Why does someone give you above average tips? Because you got the customer service down, which means you've planned, organized, and delivered the food on time and demonstrated those personal skills. Developed the ability to work six four tops and maintain great service. Well, that's telling them planning organization again. I did a previous internship and just prepared tax returns. I've seen that. Learned how to use the amazing tax software and prepared progressively more complex return. By the end of the tax season, completed 50 tax returns. See where we're going? I did a previous internship where I just did worksheets and models. Yeah. What did you do? Utilized Excel macros to import 5,000 data items from Telemet, then developed a model using pivot tables and what-if analysis. See how we've demonstrated your skills. We just didn't say you have Excel scrolls, but you're demonstrating them. I participated in a lot of com campus activities and community service. How could I share that? A few examples. Phi, Phi Kappa Chi fraternity, treasurer, education member. Managed the financial affairs of the fraternity, including cash, dues, and budgeting for 75 members in a $5,250 budget. Very specific what you did, but it demonstrates skills. Participated in five fundraising events that benefited local charities. SUNY Geneseo, men's varsity lacrosse team. Team, when you did it, honored as Sunyak Rookie of the Year and organized teams community service activities. International Business Club, organized events to bring speakers 
to campus and visit at local businesses. Okay, I'm getting it. What do I do next? Create your own unique resume. Throw your old one away. Start with what job would you like? What are the skills that are needed for that job? What skills do you have that make you right for the job? How are you going to communicate that you have and demonstrate that you have them? Develop your education component. That's straightforward for everybody. Develop your experience. Read it out loud to yourself and others. Review it with your advisor. Your, you can come review it with me. You can review it with mentors, with friends, with family, alumni. They're happy to help you. Get input. But keep asking yourself, does it highlight my skill? Does it make a difference? continually improve it. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, boyd at geneseo.edu, or stop by during office hours in 102 South Hall. Thank you and best wishes for creating the great resume that will give you the internship and the future career that you would like.